When I was a kid there was a fairground that used to come to the town they used to live in, a small town. And uh, me and my mates used to go on the rides there. And uh, some of the faster rides, like the monster or the dodgem cars, would always have like loud music playing. And it was always rock and roll music, I don't know why. Music from the late 50s and early 60s. And one song that I really remember, uh, I was associated with fairgrounds as a result, is a song called The Wanderer. I can't remember who recorded it, Dion, some, maybe, I don't know, something like that. Um, and it's a story about, you know, it's a guy saying what kind of philosophy he has in it with life. It's a, a philosopher in which he roams from town to town, he's never in one place, never settles down. And he finds himself falling for a girl, he hops back in his car and he rides around the world. Because he's a wanderer. And I've been thinking about that. Because there's some funny expressions in that song. Like, for example, this idea of never settling down. I mean, why is settling something that's down? You know, why do you have to go down to settle? And if you're not settled, if you're wandering, like on a walk like I am, how, why does that mean you're somehow up? Why are you elevated when you're wandering and down when you're not wandering any longer, when you're settled? It's almost like you're in flight, isn't it, wandering? In that in that, that metaphor at least, uh, kind of above the landscape, over the top of the trees, you know, flying over the fields, flying over the towns. And then when you uh, find you, when you do fall for a girl, you fall out of that sky, down into that town. And you fall for a girl and you settle down. Like you would settle onto a nest or something like that. So there's something about wandering, I think, which takes it above the land, even though it's, you know, an activity like I'm doing right now, walking, or if you're in a car, you're driving around the world like Dion was, but it's not really off the, you know, the ground, is it? It's, it's kind of above it, wandering. And wandering is also funny in other ways as well, I think. It's a really nice collection of short essays by, God, what's it called? Six Memos for the Next Millennium, I think it's called something like that, by... I can't remember, one of the magical realists. I can't remember, I can't remember, it's gone. Uh, it'll come back to me anyway. So annoying, he wrote On a Winter's Night of Traveller, did he? I think it was him. Anyway, um, in, one of the, in one of his uh, these little pieces that he wrote in this book, Six Memoirs for the Next Millennium or something, uh, he talks about wandering in there. To, he's not talking about specifically but there's a little section of it where he's talking about wandering in relation to vagueness well I think I think the whole little article is about exactitude that's what that's the theme of that particular article but as a contrast he talked about vagueness the lack of exactitude the lack of exactness and precision and he says that some of the etymology of the word vagueness comes from wandering he says and there's a little bit of checking there does seem to be some truth in that uh, John Locke, I think it is, um, he uses the word vague to mean kind of wandering. Um, so there's a similarity between vagueness, this imprecision, this uh, not being, having a pinpoint accuracy or something, which is also associated with not being settled down, being in a state of wandering, being above the earth. To it, pinpoint accuracy. And vagueness is also the French word vague. So it would be a g v vague in English. Is wave, isn't it? Well, vague, wave, French cinema. Uh, so vagueness is also to do with waving, which is this kind of wandering hand. You know, if you if you want to indicate that you've got a vague idea, you might do this with your hand, mightn't you, to indicate that you're are kind of wandering around, they're not precise. There's a, a vagueness in your hand movements. Which you also find in um, Gendlin, Eugene Gendlin, phenomenologist, kind of philosopher, I guess. Um, he talks about this movement, and he's talking about it's a movement that poets make when they're searching for a word talks about it in relation to what he calls the ellipsis, the three, the three dots in the uh, sentence that you sometimes find in poetry, in an incomplete sentence. He's saying when, 
poets write sentences and poems. You know, quite often they'll get to a point in the poem where the, the next word isn't quite there. It's kind of vague. And they might even do this with their hands, so the hand is wandering and their thoughts are wandering. Guide them in the search for the next word which will complete the thought. But it's also a kind of state of its own, isn't it? That, that state of being elevated, that state of thoughts not quite settling down onto a particular word, but just being held in suspension somehow. In that state of elan, which is sometimes called a state of movement between the origin and destination. I think it has some sort of stretching a bit here. I'm wandering a bit too far with this one, thing. but there's a there's a similarity in some ways to the prefix trans, which I was thinking about today in relation to a comment I left in a video on YouTube, which was um, trans is, a, is an important prefix right now, particularly in uh, in gender terms, but it's it, it features in other kinds of phrases, doesn't it? And it tends to mean things that travelling across. From one place to another, from an origin to a destination. So, if you're transitioning in gender terms, a, a simple understanding would that be would be that you're transitioning from one gender, which is known, to another gender, which will be ultimately be known and which you'll occupy at some point in the future. So, trans is that situation of being in transition. But it isn't just about being in transition, is it? There isn't necessarily a movement in transition. There isn't necessarily a destination. And it might even call into question the solidity of your origin. You know, some some understandings of transness, not necessarily in gender terms, but maybe, are about the occupying of that state, the embracing of that condition of being between. Or not even between, but I'm, or well, the kind of between which calls into question the the reality of the origin and the destination in the first place, really. Does that make any sense? You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can get to that thought really, but certainly there's a way of there's a way of being which I think is a, is about a, a, a dynamic vagueness and deliberate occupying of the kind of wavy nature of that being in between in which between is not just a transitory point that you occupy momentarily before you get to the real place that you're aiming for but 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 the vagueness the randomness the wandering nature the trans nature of betweenness is the destination itself vague, in the best sense of the word vague, wandering place. The wanderer. I'm not sure if the word wander is etymologically connected to wonder. I wonder if it is. I wonder. I wonder. So, uh, anyhow, yes. So, isn't it beautiful? Look how beautiful it is to there, if you can see all that. Really lovely evening. Something you're wandering about. I do know where I'm going, so this isn't strictly speaking a wonder. I know where I'm going, where my legs are going. I don't really know where my thoughts are going. So um, I'm not sure if this actually constitutes a wonder or not. But mentally, I'm kind of wandering. My brain is going through that series of what James calls a series of flights and perchings. It's uh, William James who talks about that. In his light metaphor as an alternative stream of consciousness. Consciousness, he says, is a series of flights and perchings, like a bird, you know, flying through the trees, flying and then settling for a moment on a branch, and it's off again. That's what being alive and awake is kind of like, really. It's the, fly, it's the flights and it's the perchings. But the flights aren't just, aren't, the flights aren't just a means of getting from one branch to another. The flights are the, in some ways, more important thing. The flights, the wandering, the vague waving of wings through the air is the uh, is the life of a bird, isn't it? Really, above the ground like that. 
not pinned down. It's not settled yet on a branch or in a nest. Not falling for some girl hopping in a car and travelling around the world. Anywho, I'll leave it there as the sun goes down behind the hill.